Hello students, uh, I'm Shomshubra Mukherjee. You guys can call me Som. So today I'll be teaching you statistical analysis. Uh, it's the BSM 101 course, and I'm sure professor has already taught you the basic concepts, but we'll be just revising them before the actual tutorial. So what is statistics? How would you define statistics? Uh, statistics can be defined as a study of collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. But you must be wondering, like, why it is important in biology? Why do you need so many numbers? I mean, biology is about living things and uh, you know, animals and plants. Why, why do we really interested about numbers that much? Well, uh, as you can see, as you delve deeper into the science of biology, you'll be finding that the uh, experiments that you do they would not give a single number, but they would give a large number, I mean, a set of measurements. You need to actually analyze the data properly to get some available information from them. I mean, the numbers don't really speak for themselves. You need to analyze them so that you can actually come to some good conclusion. So data. So what can be the two types of data? So there are two different types of data. One is the continuous, and another is the discrete. Um, so what is a continuous data? So as you can see, I've given a picture of you know, measuring tape. So suppose you have a class, so we have a class of students, and each of you have a different you know, height. So that height can uh, be you know, from 170 centimeters to like 150 centimeters. So there can be a lot of wide variation, like 150, 150.1, and it can go all the way to some say 170 to 173 centimeter. So that's like a continuous data. But for example, in case of discrete data, yeah, it'd be like when you are throwing a dice. So there can be only six alternatives. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So these are the two main types of data which you will be observing in biology. So uh, moving a bit from the data, the first thing which you will be learning in today's tutorial is rates. Uh, what is a rate? It's like a change in value, the new value minus the old optimal value versus the old value into 100. So it would give you a rate. And it can be two rates. It can be either positive, plus, or it can be negative, that is reducing. So how can that rate be useful in biology? So this is like one of the maybe a web page from a World Health Organization, which shows you like the global cancer is, will be increasing by 50% to, 50, uh, to 15 million in 2020. So this is how rates can be in, uh, useful in comprehending uh, information to you in a useful way. So once I hand over, so if you look at your tutorials, you can see that we have a question according to it as well. So um, we'll come back to that, and we can discuss about it. The second concept which, I'm, which we'll be doing in today's tutorial is ratios. Uh, as you have all read during your A-levels about Gregor Mendel, and how uh, you know the phenotype phenotypic values of 3 is to 1, uh, which would, is the core of genetics. So the ratio is actually a very important and interesting tool to come to some very important conclusion in biology. So next, uh, another very important aspect of statistics in biological sciences is the visualization of data. So as I should, uh, told you earlier, that biology will be, in biology, you'll be getting lots of raw values. And it is the way you uh, produce it to your audience that would help you to give them a clear understanding of your experiments. So the first thing which we'll be doing today is pie charts. For example, you have a, um, like a species of lizards in Singapore. You, you did some sample studies. And you have the different uh, numbers of males, females, and maybe some unknown uh, sex of the, resin, of the lizard. So uh, in the tutorials, we'll be going together about how to find the angles uh, and the ratio and proportion of it. And we are supposed to come to a good you know, conclusion like this, which would kind of give you a better visual understanding of the, uh, of the numbers of males, females, and unknown in the um, in the sample that we have provided. The next, which is a very useful tool, is the column graphs. So it can actually help you to you know, summarize large amount of information in a single diagram. So uh, I think you have all read about glycolysis and the uh, free energy changes. 
as you can see, this is like a very boring and too much information on this. I mean, you can't really figure out what it talks about. But if you can kind of comprehend it in a, you know, in a very visually interesting and stimulating manner, you can kind of have some pretty good idea about the energy or the free energy changes in it. Uh, another pretty interesting concept is the line graph. I mean, it's a pretty simple, um, I would say, tool. But it can give you a large number of you know, useful insights. And it can help you to analysis, analyze uh, results pretty effectively. Um, so for example, if you have an enzyme, uh, I'm not sure if you know what an enzyme is, just to give you a basic idea. An enzyme is actually a protein molecule, which can actually give you a particular reaction. So from A, you have the enzyme, and it would give you the uh, uh, product B. So the A is actually called substrate. And as you can see that the rate of the reaction kind of decreases uh, with the substrate concentration. So from the line graph, you can actually measure the point at which the concentration does not really affect the rate anymore. So from, the, from the, all the data you have in your uh, page the, provided by you, I mean, you can't really determine the exact value of it. But you know, using the basic tools which I'll be teaching you today, you can actually find out the particular point at which concentration stops affecting the reaction rate. Uh, the final thing which we'll be doing in today's class is the central tendency and deviation. Uh, so the first thing we'll be doing is mean. Mean is nothing but average. Like you have to just sum the total number of uh, values in the sample, and then you have to just divide it by the number of values. So we'll be doing two main types. One is like basic. Uh, you'll be just summing up all the different lengths of the uh, molasses shells that we have in the tutorial. And you can just find the mm, mean of it. And another important aspect is the yeah uh, is another type of average is like the group sample mean in which you have different samples and you have to find the uh, frequency and you have the frequency. Suppose like you have uh, so you have the frequency and you can actually find out the aspect of it. The third one is median, which is like the middle point of all the different sets of data. And you have to, like, you have to find the point at which 50% of it is above and 50% of it is below the median. And the last thing which we'll be doing today is mode, uh, which is actually pretty simple. It is the value which appears most often in the sample provided. So recap, I hope it's not true for you. According to your best recollection, I hope you don't remember nothing. I mean, it's, it would be heartbreaking for me. Uh, so just a recap. So today we'll be doing a bit of statistics, you know, the brief idea that we have, the types of measurement that we have, the rates and ratios. We'll be doing, dealing with visualization of data, uh, central tendencies, and deviation. So this is today's tutorial. We can begin now. So after maybe the tutorial. Thanks.